Hi! In this video, we're going to be taking a look at these three faulty smart sockets. A guy called Christopher sent me these, and what he said was all three of them just failed. He said he was using them for switching just lights, so he said they didn't have any heavy load or anything on them, and all three of them just failed. So let's plug one of them in and we'll just see what it's doing. So let's try this one. Now I can hear a little bit of a squeak from it. I don't know if you can hear that. I'll just put it next to the microphone. It doesn't click on and off because there should be a relay inside that you can manually switch it on and off as well. But that isn't happening. Right, let's try this one, see what this one's doing. This one's actually making a slightly different noise. Alright, let's try this one then. Well, this one did briefly click. Yeah, I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> yeah, this one started just going randomly clicking on and off and doing all kinds of things there. Now I'm not sure how easy these are going to be able to see, how easy these are to be able to get into because it looks like they are plastic welded around the outside here possibly. So it may be of a bit of a destructive entry. But we'll give it a go. I might try and heat these up slightly first, just round the edge here, with the rework station, just to see if we can melt any glue or soften any adhesive that's around the edge. So I'll just get the rework station sorted out. Oh yeah, let's give this a go. Try a little bit of IP around here just to see if that does anything. I might try a screwdriver. Yes, yeah, so I don't think these are designed to come apart once they've been put together. Right, I'll persevere with this and then I'll come back once I've actually gotten into it. Right, the spudger is complete. So what have we got in here then? Let's zoom down and have a look. So that's a little Wi-Fi board there. Let's just see if we can zoom down a bit more. That looks like an ESP8266. We've got a 3 volt regulator there, a little LED push button. Let's try and see what value these capacitors are here. 400 volts, 4.7 microfarad. 4.7 microfarad. And I think that one's 400 volts as well, by the look of it. And we've got 100 microfarads at, looks like, 10 volts, or is that 16? It's a bit hard to make out. 16 volt. What a small fuse there. What size is that? 16 amp. So we've got another fuse there. That's probably for the electronics. And that one will be for the power going through the relay, I would guess. 
and it looks like the transistor that switches the relay from the ESP and it's got a back EMF diode across it We've got a little inductor there so this must be one of those little offline switching power supplies so this will be non-isolated this power supply that's running this I don't know if we can make a number out on that offline switching IC. I'll just see if I can magnify it with this possibly. Maybe not. But it is a AK30P6 by the look of it. So why isn't it working? Let's plug it in and see if we can see what it's doing. It did sound power supply related, I think, it was, unless that was one of the other ones. So, I'm just going to zoom out a fraction. I'm going to unplug this extension lead. I'm going to plug this in. And now I'm going to add power to the extension lead. Well, the relay is opening and closing there, as you can probably hear, and the light briefly lit up. So I'm just going to zoom out a fraction. Let's see if we can get the meter in shot here. Now, I can't remember the pinouts of this voltage regulator. I'm not sure if that's ground. Well, let's just switch it on again. And strangely enough, it's not. I'm just switch that off again. It's not doing anything now. There we go. Let's just see if we can measure the voltage on here. Right, we're only getting 1.5 volts on that. And it's jumping around, so I'll just unplug that a second. So I'm thinking capacitors. Either mains input or smoothing on the output. So let's see how this board comes out then. It looks like we need to desolder these two points here and then we should be able to get this board out. Now let's grab the solder iron. Let's get some solder work here as well. Let's cut this bit off. Maybe just add a bit of flux onto this. Yeah, that's one of them done. Let's try this other one. I'm just going to snip the excess off. Right, let's see if it's wanting to come off now. I might just try heating these a little bit at the same time. the PCB removed and there's not a lot on the back of it right so we're going to main smooth that here and the main smooth that there let's just double check that there's no voltage in them two capacitors then. Just use my solder sucker I think. I'm just going to add a bit of fresh solder first just to make it easier to desolder them. Actually they'll probably just pull out I would think. Well there's one out. And there's the other one and let's pull this little capacitor out as well. Add a bit of fresh solder. There we go, just fell out with that one. Let's 
just clean these holes up. I'll just give that a bit of a clean up with some IP. Right, I think that'll do for that. Just put that to one side. Right, let's get the little component tester here. I just want to see what these capacitors measure. So, so this one should be 4.7 microfarads, and this is one of the main smoothers. Yeah, it looks about right. I'm not sure on the ESR of it though. Possibly a bit high that. Let's just compare it to the other one. Yeah, I think that measures a bit high as well. It's even higher than the previous one. And this is the little output capacitor. And that's supposed to be 100 microfarads. And the ESR is well out on that, and it's only measuring 44 microfarads. So that one definitely needs replaced. Right, I shall go and see if I can find some capacitors. Unfortunately, I don't have any of those capacitors, so in the meantime, I think what we'll do, I'll order some on Amazon, and we'll have a look at the other two units, see if we can see what's wrong with those. So let's put these to one side. Let's see if we can get into one of the other ones then. I've put a bit of acetone around the edge here hoping it would seep into the glue just to try and make it a bit easier to disassemble. But I suspect this is going to be the same sort of issue. Right, I'll see if I can get into this one and then I'll resume once I'm actually into it. Right, well that one actually went a bit easier than I was expecting. And it's pretty much identical to the other one, just in a different form factor. Actually I've just noticed there's a few slight differences because on the other unit the smoothing capacitor for the output was over here. So it is a slightly different design and the switching IC is in a different place as well. It's actually a different Wi-Fi board in as well, slightly. Actually looks like a different chip out as well. That's an RTL chip. So not ESP based this one. With a different switching IC as well. I can't quite make the number out on that one though. That's just. Uh, ideally, I need the microscope and work the numbers out. Let's see if I can look at it with my little spy glass here. And it looks like a KP15051SP. Yeah, very similar layout to the other one. There's the three, three point three volt regulator there. So I wonder if we should measure the voltage on this one, or just go straight for the caps. I think we'll measure the voltage. Just why not? <laughs> right. I'll just zoom out a bit. Right, so the voltage regulator is here. I'm just trying to see the best way. Just trying to get the meter and everything in the shot here. Right, I'll just see if I can get. 
Right. Okay, I'll just switch this on. Yeah, so we seem to be getting a, a bit of a pulse that's coinciding with the noise of the switch and IC. But we're not getting any voltage there, so I'll right, we'll just give that a moment to discharge. So yeah, I'm pretty much thinking capacitors on this one as well. I think all three of them are going to be capacitors now. Right, let's see if we can pull this board out. I'm just going to try heating it up and see if I can just wiggle it. Right, there we go. Right, let's pull this one first. I'll just add a bit of fresh solder, just to make it a bit easier. And I'll see where the other two are as well. Right, let's get the component tester out again. Zoom out a fraction. So this is one of the 400 volt caps, 4.7 microfarads. It's only reading about four microfarads, or four point one, and I'm not sure about that ESR reading as well. Let's try this one. Again, ESR read. I'm not sure whether that's a bit high. And we've got 4.3 microfarads. And this one is supposed to be 16 volts at 470. And it's not actually showing any ESR on that one for some reason. Let's try that again. Let's try it the other way around. Doesn't want to show any ESR on this one for some reason, I don't know why. Yeah, strange that one. Well, I think we're placing all three caps on this one as well. Right, let's see if we can get into the last one then. Right, so I'm just using a screwdriver. I'm just getting two in and just working away around a bit. It seems to be popping apart quite nicely. There we go. Right, let's zoom down a bit on this one then. And again, another Realtek chip. I can't remember if I read that number off on the last chip. W302 and then underneath that is JB1CZP3. Again, can't see anything obvious, so I'm just thinking capacitors on this one as well. Ah, oh, hold on. I wasn't sure if that was the bottom of that capacitor. Has it exploded there or something? Because that doesn't look quite right, does it? I 
don't normally have a big rubber bone sticking out the bottom like that but it doesn't appear to be domed on the top or is it? Yeah, it looks like it's starting to explode that one Definitely doesn't look right that does it? Right, I'll remove this board and remove these capacitors and then we'll test those as well. One moment please. Right, I've just finished removing the board and I've removed the capacitors from it. And that one definitely doesn't look right, does it? Be interesting to see what this one measures. Let's get that in shot. So again, 470 microfarads, 16 volt this one. Yeah, that doesn't look right, does it? Measures about 120 microfarads, and the V loss looks yeah, not right. So, that one definitely needs to be replaced. Let's try this one. This is 400 volt, 4.7. Yeah, don't like the look of the ESR on that one as well. Let's try this one. I'm not sure what the ES are supposed to be on these. Well, it looks a bit high to me. Oh. I'll check the leads came out of here. Let's plug that back in. Again, ES are to me looks a bit high, but. Again, I'm no expert, so so I think I'll replace all of these three capacitors as well. By the way, if you want one of these component testers, I've got this one off Amazon. There's some links in the video description along with some other tools that I use. So if you're interested, check it out. Right, I'll order some capacitors and then we'll continue once those arrive. Well, it's been a couple of days and the new capacitors have just arrived. So let's fit them and see if we can repair these. I'll start with this one. Now one of the problems that I may have is the capacitors I've got seem to be slightly larger physically than the original ones. I think the 400 volt ones will be okay. But we might have to get a little bit creative with the 16 volt 470 microfarad ones. get these in and get the polarity around the right way. I'll just zoom down a little bit. So that should go on like that. Right, let's get those soldered in. I'll just snap off those excess legs. Just tidy that a little bit up. Over it. Right, so that's those two soldered in. Now this one, I might have a bit of trouble. Because with it being physically larger in diameter, and this cover's got to go on there, there's only... Just, uh, that'll fit on, that is. That might not fit on now because of the... Oh yeah, it does, it's okay. I wasn't sure that that would fit on because of the capacitor there, but I think that'll be okay. But this one, because of the size of the capacitor compared to the space between the relay and that, I may have to slightly angle this one forward. We'll see how we get on with that. So what I'm thinking is something a little bit like that. And that should be okay. And I could put some hot glue or something just to attach it to the relay. 
Just also got a bit mechanical support. I'll just bridge the contacts there. Right, that's a bit better. Right, so let's get some hot glue and I'll put some hot glue on this capacitor. Right, and there we go. Now, one thing that I've just realised is the original capacitor in this plug was only 100 megafarad. But in the other plugs, it was 470. So I wonder if they've upgraded the capacitor in these. Because they were having issues with the 100 megafarad one. Perhaps it might last longer, I don't know. But I mean, it's only a smoothing capacitor, so I don't think it should really affect it. So let's solder this back up and then we'll give it a test. Let's see if we can get this all back together. And for some reason, it doesn't want to sit properly. Right, there's a little bit solder on that connection here still. I'll just solder with that bit off. Right, let's try that now then. That's better. Just do the other side. Right, I think that looks okay. Right, I'll just go and get the extension lead and we'll give it a test. Right, I'll just zoom out a bit. And I haven't got the extension lead plugged in currently, so let's plug this in first. Alright, let's see if this works then. I'm going to plug it in in three, two, one. Well, I did see a little brief flash there. That looks promising. So I think what I'll do next then, we'll do the same with the other two. We'll check that they work with the on-off switch on the side, and then we'll try connecting the Wi-Fi and see if they all work properly. Right, I'll switch this off and we'll have a look at the next one. I'll have to try and re-glue this round the outside to make it safe because otherwise if you pull it just the whole top's going to come off which wouldn't be ideal would it? Right, let's have a look at this other one then. So we we'll want the 470 to go here. And the two 4.7s, one goes here and one goes there. Right, let's solder those up then. I'll zoom down a bit. These excess legs cut off. Right, we'll solder these bits up. Right, let's give this one a test then. Right, I'm just going to plug it in, in three, two, one. Right, so that looks like that one's okay. I'll just switch it back off. I'll just give it a moment to discharge. Right, that's that one. And now just the last one. Right, I'll just solder those up. I'll just zoom down the fraction again. And I noticed with this one, part of the pad actually came off when it was desoldered. So I'll have to flood more solder on the bottom of this one. Just to make sure it's got a good contact. Not that I'm really going to be switching heavy loads with these in any case, so... Right, let's put this back together. Put this little cover thing back on. Right, let's go and grab the extension lead again. And we'll give this one a try. Let's see if we get three out of three. Right, I'm just going to power the extension lead on again. Hmm. Well, 
Well, this one isn't switching on. And I can hear it making a little bit of a noise. I'm not sure if you can hear I'll try putting this next to the microphone so you can hear. So this one appears to have another problem. Nice. I'll just switch it off a moment. Right, let's see. If we're getting any voltage on this voltage regulator. So I'm just going to volts DC. I'm just going to switch it on again. Let's see if we got any. Right, well, we're not getting any voltage on there. There's a capacitor here. Let's try across this capacitor. Nothing. Hmm. Right, I'm just going to switch it off again. So I'm saying I'm going to have to desolder this again and take the circuit board out again. Right, I'll desolder these. We'll get the circuit board out. Right, let's just zoom down a bit, see if we can see anything. Well, the really is rated at 5 volts DC so and we've got a 3.3 .3 volt regulator so I guess this little offline power supply must give out round about 5 volts then. we've got a couple of diodes there which will be for rectifying the AC out of the offline switcher that feeds the regulator. Let's check those just in case. Right, let's go on to diode check. Well, that one's okay. Can't quite get in for that capacitor now. Well, I seem to be getting a short across there. Let's just try on this capacitor. Right. Well, we seem to have a short. So what I might do, because we know this is roughly about 5 volts, is remove this capacitor and I'll hook it up with a bench power supply and we'll see if the RTL chip or module is working because it could be something like this is fried or it could be that diode down there but hopefully if we're connecting up with the bench power supply and use the thermal camera we'll maybe to see what exactly has gone short so right, just zoom back out a fraction and just remove that capacitor and I'll just check that I've put it in the right way as well, because negative is towards the chip. Right, that's the capacitor out. I'll just clear these holes with my solder sucker. And we'll just try again. Now we've got a bit more space just with the meter. Just to see if the short's still there. And yes, I did have it around the right way, because negative's towards the chip. Yeah, we've definitely got some kind of short going on there still. Right, I'll hook the bench power supply up and I'll get the thermal camera out. One moment, please. Right, I've got the power supply set up at one volt at one amp. And I've just got a couple of wires going onto where the capacitor goes. So I'm just going to switch the power supply on and we'll just see if we can see what's getting hot. 
and it appears there's something just there. I switched it off, you can see it fading out. I'll just increase the amps a little bit more, I'll put it up to maybe 2 amp. And there you go, you can see it straight away there. centered in the shot there so that appears to be that component there which looks like a capacitor just in front of that voltage regulator I'll just zoom down a bit I'll just try that again maybe a bit hard to try and get the thermal camera in shot as well So, just there. So, C8. Let's just zoom down a bit if we can. It actually looks like there might be a slight mark on that. I don't know if you can see. There seems to be a little bit of a white band. Just about there, in the middle of it. Right, so that just looks like a decoupling capacitor across the supply. And we know the supply is going to be around about 5 volts. I mean, the cap's rated a bit more. The uh, capacitor here, the smoothing capacitor, is rated a bit more. Well, I'll see if I can find a capacitor. That's probably suitable to do the job. And it's going to be about 0 0.1 microfarad or 0 0.01 microfarad, something like that. I don't think the value is going to be so so critical so right I'll see if I can find a capacitor and we'll just replace that and then we'll see what happens then right so I found a 100 nanofarad capacitor that should do let's see if I can get this one removed I'm just going to put a bit of flux on here I think that's got it. Right, I'll just zoom out a bit. And we'll see if I've got a short across there now. Excellent. Right, let's try powering it up with a bench power supply. And we'll just see if the light actually comes on. I'll just switch the bench power supply on again. And I'll turn it up to about 5 volts. Yes. Right, I'll replace the capacitor and then we'll solder this one back up. So I wonder if this was the original fault on this one then, if it was the shorter capacitor and not the actual smoothing capacitor that were the problem. I'm just going to give that a little bit of a clean up because I've got a bit of flux everywhere. Right, I'll have to remove the solder off these terminals quickly as well. Right, let's solder these ones back up. Right, I'll just go and grab the extension lead again and we'll give this one a try now. Right, I'll switch it on in three, two, one. Yes. Right, I shall go get my phone, we'll configure these with the Wi-Fi app and then we'll make sure that they're all working. So I shall go set that up and then we'll test them out.
Right, I've got the Smart Home app installed on my phone now, and I've glued, I've, and I've super glued the shells back on these, so hopefully they don't come apart now. I've just got a lamp plugged into the sockets, and I've got all the sockets set up here, so let's try, this one's Smart Plug number one, number two, and number three, so let's press the button. And there we go, there's number one working, I'm going to switch it back off. Right, I'll plug this into number two. Let's try that one. Yes. Alright, let's try number three. Excellent. So that's all three of them fixed. Right. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, please subscribe. Any comments or questions, please leave it in the comment section below. And as always, have a great day. Thanks for watching.